Israel. Right to exist as an independent Jewish state. Of security assistance shipments uh, in the context of unfolding events uh, uh, in Russia. Even before Israeli tanks entered Gaza's Rafah crossing, the U.S. protested Netanyahu's dangerous plan with a strategic move that has now substantiated the reports of TIF between Israel and its closest ally, the U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has confirmed the U.S. paused a shipment of bombs to Israel last week over concerns the country was approaching a decision to launch a full-scale assault on the southern Gaza city of Rafah against the wishes of the US. But as he confirmed this move, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was briefly interrupted by pro-Palestinians protesters Wednesday during his remarks to the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee on Defense. Uh, and so we're going to continue to do what's necessary to ensure that Israel has the means to defend itself. Uh, but that said, uh, we are currently reviewing some near-term uh, security assistance shipments uh, in the context of unfolding events uh, uh, in Rafa. Uh, so you agree with the pause, and I mean, you were consulted and agree with the pause, Mr. Secretary? Uh, I, again, I, I think uh, we haven't made any decisions. We, uh, we did uh, pause as we uh, re-evaluated uh, uh, some of the security assistance that we're providing uh, to and so stop the clock so that Jerry gets his full two and a half minutes. So, so we, we've been very clear, Senator, as you know, from the very beginning that, uh, that Israel shouldn't launch a, a major attack in Arafa without accounting for uh, and protecting the civilians that are in that battle space. The shipment was supposed to consist of 1,800 bombs of 900 kilogram and 1,700 bombs of 225 kilogram. And what comes as even a bigger surprise is that U.S. State Department confirming that more halts like this could follow and U.S. is already reviewing other shipments. You look at the fact that there are so many people crowded into such a uh, small area, when you look at the way Israel has conducted its operations in the past and what the impact on the civilian population has been. Um, and we also have concerns about the impact of any potential operation on the delivery of humanitarian assistance. So we have paused one shipment of near-term assistance and we are reviewing others. The U.S. has historically provided enormous amounts of military aid for Israel. That has only accelerated in the aftermath of Hamas's October 7th attack that killed some 1,200 in Israel and led to about 250 being taken captive by militants. The pausing of the aid shipment is the most striking manifestation of the growing daylight between Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government and the administration of President Joe Biden, which has called on Israel to do far more to protect the lives of innocent civilians in Gaza. Biden's administration in April began reviewing future transfers of military assistance as Netanyahu's government appeared to move closer toward an invasion of Rafah, despite months of opposition from the White House. The confirmation of U.S. halted transfer came as Biden on Tuesday described U.S. support for Israel as ironclad, even when we disagree. My commitment to the safety of the Jewish people, the security of Israel, and its right to exist as an independent Jewish state is ironclad even when we disagree. This rebuke to Israel come later after Israeli troops on Tuesday seized control of Gaza's vital Rafah border 
crossing in what the White House described as a limited operation that stopped short of the full-on Israeli invasion of the city that Biden has repeatedly warned against on humanitarian grounds, most recently in a Monday call with Netanyahu. There are more than one million uh, civilians that is in Rafa, a densely, a dense populated area in Rafa, more than one million. And we want to make sure that there are no civilian casualties here. And so we've been clear about that. We are going to continue to monitor uh, the situation closely to see how it unfolds. And certainly we will continue to speak out. Israel has ordered the evacuation of 100,000 Palestinians from the city. Israeli forces have also carried out what it describes as targeted strikes on the eastern part of Rafa and captured the Rafa crossing, a critical conduit for the flow of humanitarian aid along the Gaza-Egypt border. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the military's capture of the Gaza side of the Rafah crossing is an important step toward dismantling Hamas's military and economic capabilities. The entry into Rafah serves two of the main objectives of the war, returning our hostages and eliminating Hamas. We have already proven in the previous release of hostages that military pressure on Hamas is an essential condition for the return of our hostages. The Hamas proposal yesterday was designed to torpedo the entry of our forces into Rafah. That did not happen. Privately, concern has mounted inside the White House about what's unfolding in Rafah. But publicly, administration officials have stressed that they did not think the operations had defied Biden's warnings against a wide-scale operation in the city. White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said Israel described the operation along the Gaza-Egypt border in eastern Rafa as an operation of limited scale and duration aimed at cutting off Hamas arms smuggling, but also said the U.S. would monitor the fighting. But what we've been told by our Israeli counterparts is that this operation last night was limited and designed to cut off Hamas's ability to smuggle weapons and funds into Gaza. What I've said is, we've heard that, and we're watching, we're monitoring. We don't want to see a major ground operation uh, in Rafah, certainly none that hasn't fully and appropriately taken in the need to secure the safety uh, of the 1.5 million people that are seeking refuge. Just last month, Congress passed a $95 billion national security bill that included funding for Ukraine, Israel, and other allies. The package included more than $14 billion in military aid for Israel, though the stalled transfer was not related to that measure. The State Department is separately considering whether to approve the continued transfer of joint direct attack munition kits, which place precision guidance systems onto bombs to Israel, but the review didn't pertain to imminent shipments. The US-Israel relationship has been close through both Democratic and Republican administrations, but there have been other moments of deep tension since the founding in which US leaders have threatened to hold up aid in attempt to sway Israeli leadership.